perfect. Bum ba da da. Ramadan Diaries. Episode four. Today I'm filming one of my most requested videos. Like the most requested video. I get asked this at least once a day. You girls have been wanting to know what my hijab journey has been like, and it is currently 1 a.m. What better time than now? My entire family is asleep, so I do gotta kinda keep it down, but I'm gonna be telling you girls my hijab story from start to now. This is a bit awkward for me because I feel like every single video that I film is more like action based, like I'm doing something, but there's nothing to do here except for talk. So get your snacks, get your get ready with me started, start cleaning your room and just let this video play in the background because it's kind of going to be more podcast-y where I'm just, I'm just going to sit here and talk because girl, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> I don't know how else I'm supposed to do story time. Where to start, where to start. So. My hijab journey started back when I was eight, nine years old. It was like eight turning nine-ish, but I just say eight years old for simple things. So it was when I was eight years old, I just wanted to wear the hijab so bad. Now the reasons for this, I wish I had some like beautiful flowery reason where I was just like one day I woke up and I was like, yes, today is the day. I'm so princess. I'm so beautiful. I just need to do this. This is the moment. And I just had like the eureka moment. But no, actually no. I was a highly insecure, empathetic child. And that was my reason. When I was younger, when I was eight, around that age, I was teased a lot. I wouldn't really call it bullying because I feel like that's way too strong of a word. But I was definitely teased. I was extremely, like, underweight. And along with that, I had, like, typical North African add-up girl features. Like, I had, like, hairy arms. And so, growing up, I was called a splew of words, okay? I was called, my nickname, some people called me Harry Styles because of how Harry was. <laughs> I was called Harry Styles. I was called Noodle Padoodle. I was just called Noodle. I was called Spaghetti Stick. Um, you name it, I've probably been called it. And so, I was just highly insecure of myself, so that was one reason. And then another reason was the empathy part comes in. I really looked up to my mom growing up and obviously my mom wore hijab. And so growing up, whenever we'd go to the grocery store, whenever we'd go out, I was always just like, I feel so bad for my mom. Like my mom has to wear it alone. She probably feels so left out because it was me and my two other sisters. I was like, she probably feels so left out that she doesn't get to show her hair. I feel so bad. Like my mom's probably so alone. Like I want to be with her cause she's so cool. And I just, I want to be with her so we can be together and she doesn't have to be alone. That was the other reason. And then the last reason was eight year old me just, I loved my religion so much. I loved Islam so much. And I knew that one day I would have to wear hijab. And so Eight-year-old me took all three of those reasons, my insecurities, which really, if you think about it, this is like, this was probably like the, the heaviest weighted reason, but it was so stupid because in my brain, I was like, oh, if I wear hijab, then I get to cover up completely, like wear long sleeves, long pants and stuff. Because, you know, like eight-year-old me, I would wear like capris and I'd wear short sleeve shirts, but it's just like, girl, you didn't have to jump to hijab. Like I could have literally just worn that regardless. I really don't know where the thought process was with that. Like, girl, you can't blame me. I was eight. Anyways. So insecurities, empathetic, and love of my religion was eight-year-old me's culmination for wanting to wear hijab. And I was just like, one day I literally just put on this little like one-piece hijab and I was like, mama, baba, I'm going to wear it. And my parents at first were like, are you sure you're like young? Like, is this actually something you want to do? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And they fully supported me. It was completely, wholly, 100% my choice. 100% my choice. Because I feel like a lot of the times, whenever I tell people that I wore hijab at such a young age, like 8 years old, they always like, did your parents sneak you? Were you forced? Like, did you need it? No. No. Well, I won't lie. There definitely are some parents out there that like force their daughters and their children. My parents are not like that. They were fully supportive. And they even told me like, girl, are you sure you're like really young? And I was like, yes. This is what I want. And they trusted me and I've been wearing it ever since. So my choice, my choice completely. And I'm so happy and proud that I did it back then. So eight, I'm currently 21. Now we got all that, all that gaps to fill. Where do I even start? Where do I even go? When I wore the hijab, I was like in elementary, eight years old. Yeah, like elementary school. 
uh, didn't really matter to me. I was like, girl, I'm not even thinking like elementary, middle school, like girl, fifth grade. The school that I went to for elementary and middle school was a very, very, very diverse school. Like the principal was a Muslim. The vice principal was a Muslim. Like we had a really big Turkish population in our school. So like so many of them were Muslim and along with that like every other student was like from some sort of like diverse ethnic background we had a huge Filipino population he like it was just so diverse that it's just like I never felt outcasted I never felt weird and like there were so many other like little hijabi girls as well so I never felt weird I never felt outcasted I never felt different like and also like you're eight nine ten eleven twelve like girl <laughs> I didn't care about my clothes, I didn't care, you know what I mean, like, girl, I, I'm not worried about the latest fashion trends, like, I'm not worried about, I'm just like, I'm rocking up here, no one can call me Harry Styles anymore because my arms are covered, and I'm slaying this hijab down, like, that was my, that was, that was me, like, I didn't care, you know, so, middle school, elementary school, like, everything was just a blast, didn't really have anything, outside of school, though, there were definitely a lot of odd encounters that I will never forget with hijab, one thing that I will never, ever forget that definitely, like, struck me so deeply like so deeply as a child is one day I was at Trader Joe's with my mom and when you pay at Trader Joe's like near the exit there's a little like bench that you get to sit at so my mom you know she would drag four kids to the store she didn't want all four kids huddled around like the little cash register because it's so small so she'd make us all go sit at the exit wait for her to pay and then we'd all walk out together growing up I was taught that smiling is sunnah sunnah is like a following of the prophet like you should really do it and smiling is really good you get good deeds it's just a beautiful habit to do so as a child it was albeit probably be creepy like i'm not gonna lie i would just smile so brightly at anyone and everyone like i would literally make eye contact with everyone in the store and i'd just be like they all smiled back except for this one old hag so i was sitting on the bench waiting for my mom and as the people would walk by me to exit i'd like sit and i'd smile at them all cutely like this was like eight nine-year-old me and I remember this old guy like old he looked two seconds away from dying he like slows down and he approaches me and I like smile really brightly at him and he gives me the most disgusted look the most disgusted look he like looks me up and down he's like and he like points at his head obviously indicating my hijab I remember as a child the way my face dropped and I was so upset and that was like my first encounter of I think you could call that Islamophobia that's like my first encounter of it and it has girl it has obviously traumatized me to this day so but outside of that my hijab journey was great middle school elementary school loved it okay then we hit high school okay there really isn't sorry guys like I wish I had more to talk about this elementary middle school but there was literally nothing like wore the hijab loved it like fit in like I was a little girl like there was there's nothing more to say high school happens now this is where the story if you kind of get where I'm going. So I leave my little school that was really diverse and really nice and filled with a bunch of other Muslims, a place that I just felt like I, I wasn't an outcast in. And I go to the school that is in the really rich part of my town. And it is like a predominantly white school, like a very like 95% white rich kid school. And it was really tough because I didn't really fit and you're gonna be like I mean but your skin is I'm talking about like like ethnic background I was like obviously I am Tunisian if you didn't know now you know and so obviously like my cultural backgrounds and then also religious wise like I didn't really fit into that you know demographic if you kind of get what I'm saying anyway so high school happens and the friend group that I had in middle school like not to get too much into that because that's not really relevant to the hijab story but the friend that I had in middle school there was like two other hijabis there we were kind of friends freshman year and then that kind of fell through and so then that was like mushed aside and they kind of left the school too and I was trying to find like a new friend group I wanted to expand out so I entered in this new friend group and things were great but it definitely became a little tough because there were 2,000 plus students and staff in the school and I was the only hijabi. The only hijabi, I, there may have been, I think there was like one when I was a freshman, like after my friends left, there was like one other one and like maybe another one as like a junior I can't really remember but like long story short it was like basically one in 2000 okay that's what you need to know this new friend group that I entered was very sweet very nice 
all the way from the beginning, all the, at least that's what I thought. When you're a freshman, things are kind of like silly, like silly willy, like you're straight from middle school, you kind of still have that like middle school-esque mindset, but like the older you get, kind of like the more serious things become in high school because you're like going to college and you have things to worry about. So the older I got, the more I noticed that the friends I was with, I felt like I was being left out. This is going to go in a circle because I don't have any notes or anything. Like, I'm just trying to recall these events. But if you're a girl, you're going to understand what I'm saying. But when you have friends, you constantly kind of take pictures with each other. You know, you're posting each other on your private Snapchat stories. You're taking pictures whenever you go out to the mall or a cafe or a restaurant. You're trying to take cute Instagram pictures to post on your feed to let people know, like, this is my friend. This is my girl. You know what I mean? At least the way that I perceive this is the more I the older I got throughout high school, like the more I progressed, the more I began to realize that some of these friends that I thought I was close with and I thought that like, you're my best friend, like you're my best friend, I'm your best friend, the more I started to realize that they kind of didn't perceive me in that way. And like they, whenever we would hang out, they would take pictures with all the other girls and stuff and post them. But then I, I felt like they would never post me. Whenever we would take Instagram pictures, photos of a day we all hung out I'd swipe through the pictures and I'd be like okay there's that girl that we hung out there's that girl that we hung out there's that girl we also took pictures but I don't see that picture on your feed and it was like okay whoa uh whenever we would post like snapchat stories like snapchat back in like high school at least was like huge like you would post everything on your private snapchat story and even then or like even your normal story like you would take pictures and stuff and post it you'd be like first date kind of nervous with your friends you post snapchats and whatnot and I just felt like I just felt like my friends and you may be like I mean like this is so superficial like what are you talking about like posting like what girl where are you even getting out with this but it's kind of just hard to explain because ah oh, I don't want to sound like super I don't want to be like my friends didn't post me and that is where the story turns back but like I don't know maybe if you're a girl you're gonna understand what I'm saying it's just like if you are constantly posting about other people and constantly posting about your other friends and you're not posting when we're together you're not posting when I'm with you it's like a little bit like huh throughout high school I also started to become really really insecure in myself and in my body and in the way that I looked like I just want you guys to imagine imagine one in 2,000 students being the only hijabi there walking in being the only one covered head to toe it was tough everyone wore like like I said the demographic was like white rich kids so everyone was wearing like lululemon leggings and the newest like vans the newest nikes lululemon tops brandy melville they were coming into school with like bmws and whatnot and i was like getting dropped off by my mom wearing like a t-shirt that i like thrifted and so like all of that kind of added into my insecurities and then on top of that it's just like when i would be with my friends i felt like I was always kind of this odd person out. To kind of give you an idea of like what I'm saying is one time I was with my friend, a person that I would notice like would never really post about me, would never like I would constantly post with her. She would constantly post with other girls, but whenever it came to posting with me, it was just like kind of non-existence-ish. I remember so vividly I had hung out with her one day and we were driving back home like to my house and she gets a call from her boyfriend and she's like on the call like hi how are you like I'm doing good I'm just hanging out with a friend and like this is on speaker I can hear and he's like oh like who's the friend I kid you not she like looks at me and then she looks at him she's like no like it's, it's no one you know and he's like oh like I don't care like show me who it is like I want to see she's like no like it's okay you don't know you don't know her it's okay and he's like come on like I, I don't care she's like no no it's okay okay like I'm driving I'll call you later and like that was it she like refused to show like didn't even want to turn the camera to show her boyfriend that she was hanging out with me and you know you may have your own perceptions about this and be like I mean you're so overreacting like that had nothing to do with your hijab that was just like maybe maybe she just like whatever but imagine a 15 16 year old girl already insecure already feeling like this th this odd is the term odd thumb out I don't know already feeling this odd one out being with friends noticing that no one really wants to like post with her or whatever and then you're like with your friend that you consider really close and she doesn't even want to show her boyfriend that she's hanging out with you you know what I mean like 
I don't know what the intention was behind that. Maybe I was reading into it too much. But in 16-year-old me's brain, the reason why she didn't want to show her boyfriend she was with me is because I was wearing hijab. Time after time after time again, you know, private story after private story after Instagram post after Instagram post after like walking together at school, blah, 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 seeing like person in our friend group after person in our friend group after person in our friend group always just minus me, it started to hurt a little bit because I was like, what is different about me? Like, I talk like you, I act like you, I dress like you, I have the same humor as you. What is different about me? What is so different that you are almost embarrassed to post about me, to talk about me, to anything with me? I was like, what is just so different? You post with every other girl, you do all the other things with every other girl, but when it comes to me, it's always like, oh, like I I, I don't have my phone, I don't want to use Snapchat today, I don't want to use Instagram today. And it was just odd because it was just like time and time and time and time and time again, the only conclusion I could ever come to was my hijab. I was being like left out, or at least the way I perceived this, mind you, there could be a multitude of other reasons, you know, like who knows maybe they just didn't like me as a person or whatever it was but in 16 year old me's brain like this was the reason was because of my hijab and so I started like I was saying I started to kind of lose myself a little bit and then COVID hit I had taken off my undercap and just putting on my hijab like pretty loosely and so the front ends of my hair would start to show And that's kind of what I mean by I started to lose myself because in my brain, I was like, they, these friends don't like me and they don't like me because of my hijab. They don't like me because I don't look like them. So maybe, maybe if I do this, I'll look a little bit more like them and they'll like me more. They'll want to hang out with me more. They'll invite me to their house more. They'll post with me more. They'll want to take Instagram pictures with me more. And so that obviously didn't work. (laughs) I was a very insecure person. Like I hated the way I looked. I barely have any photos from high school to begin with. And so this feeling of insecurity tied with like also like when I was posting on TikTok and whatnot, some people would be like, oh, you're like so pretty. And so then I started like craving this validation and being like, if they don't like me for the way I look, other people would like me. And I look so cute. Like the front strands of my hair was out and I was like I just I so fit in I look so cool I look so cute and the ironic thing was though when that had started I was like internally hoping like even though it was COVID like there was this huge thing I don't know if other people did this but like people would get their cars and like park them reversed in like a little circle socially distanced and like you'd sit in your trunk and like talk to your friends in like an, an empty parking lot so you could still see them but like follow COVID restrictions I don't know so I was like secretly hoping like oh they're gonna see that like I'm cool now my hair is out and I fit in like I'm just like you now like do you see these like two inches of hair yeah I'm so like you I'm so like you and so I was hoping like they would see that and kind of want to become closer with me and kind of want to become friends with me and the actual exact opposite happened like (laughs) no that friend those friendships did not work out they did not make it out of high school like second semester junior year now we're in like senior year of high school and we kind of go the whole semester until I graduate and graduation happens there's an event at school blah 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 blah. at this point I'm still like showing strands of my hair I'm putting like really heavy makeup on and all these types of things to kind of like fit in and and I don't know fit in but then when graduation happened and I came back home I feel like everything kind of just hit me and I entered into one of like that summer summer 2021 2022 was it I don't know I think it was 2021 it was summer 2021 was one of the worst years of my life summers of my life it was I entered my worst depressive episode because I really sat back and reflected on who I had started to become in regards to like the hijab and how 
like skinny jeans and like the front strands of my hair was out and I was like so I really started to reflect and it just like hurt because when I had graduated high school and I left that group behind and I left that chapter of my life behind I was like I changed so much of myself I changed who I was as a person for people that I will never see again I had just lost myself for people that I can't even tell you what their last name is anymore like I fundamentally changed who I was as a person and what I believed in and I I changed the way I dressed I changed the way I acted I changed the way I looked I changed my hijab the a very core part of who I am for for people who don't even matter don't even matter you know I've never seen them since like I'm a junior in in university now never seen them never talked to them and I did all of that all of that four years of my life that I was trying to change and I was trying to fit in and I was trying to be different I lost so much of myself and I was just so disappointed at myself at how I had allowed myself to reach such a low point and a lot of you may look the back and be like Amina you're being so dramatic but it was a lot for me like going from wearing like a one-piece hijab and being so cutesy and nice to like having like girl the hijab was like back here all of it was out and it was just cray cray it was just a lot and when I was reflecting I was like what did I do that all for like literally what did I do that for I changed myself for who literally who are you who are you to me now no one and I you these people had such a chokehold on me and on the way that I acted on the way that I dressed on the way that I viewed my religion for what for what and so that summer of 2021 was just one of the worst summers of my life because I was just like why did I do this why did I change myself why did I become a version of myself that I hated so much I didn't like looking at the mirror and seeing what I had become like I didn't like looking in the mirror and seeing half my hair out because in my eyes I knew what I was doing was wrong but I was just like they're gonna like me they did not like me so I was like I did this for what then? (laughs) I did this for you and you didn't even accept it. You didn't even like it. So what did I do this for? So I kind of went on this downward spiral where I just started to hate myself more and more and more. And it got to a point where I was like, Loki don't want to be here anymore. Loki like don't want to be here anymore. Loki like get me, get me out. We've got to we gotta get what I'm putting down and so I started kind of become getting closer to my religion by praying like so many extra prayers like I remember I would sit on the prayer mat from like maghrib prayer which during summer happened at like 6 30 like 6 37 I'd sit on the prayer mat from like that time to asha prayer which is like like 8 p.m it was almost like an hour and a half two hours that I would just sit on the map the the, like the prayer mat and just like pray and like pray like please help me I'm struggling like I don't know why I did this to myself like I don't know why I allowed myself to get so far I don't know why I did this like please help me like I'm struggling so much and then things started to kind of go upwards from there slowly by slowly because once you you know wearing the hijab back here for like a year of my life like I started to become accustomed to that look and pushing it back like I just felt so like ugly at that point because I was just so used to seeing myself like like with half my hair out like like that if you know what I'm saying and so slowly by slowly I started inching the hijab forward like it went from here to here and then 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 from here to here I should have said this at the beginning of the video but hijab is so much more than just the cloth you wear on your head there are tangible aspects to the hijab and intangible aspects so tangible is like the cloth you wear on your head and the clothes you wear on your body intangible is your character the way you act the way you present yourself the way you are in public so there's two facets to hijab so like i'm specifically and only talking about the the tangible outer layer if you know what i'm saying 
So anyways, started fixing the hijab like this, and then I started also fixing my wardrobe, like, ditched all the skinny jeans and everything, went straight to, like, jeans that were four times too big than me, and, like, like shirts that reached my knees and stuff, and slowly working on that, and slowly getting closer and closer to my religion. That summer finished, and we were still, like, at a halfway point, and college, university had started, And at that point, I was still kind of, like, maybe, like, that much hair was showing, but it was so much better than, like, that much, you know what I mean? But I slowly started work on myself, like, both the tangible and the intangible aspects. Like, I was working on my character and becoming a kinder person and becoming more mellow and becoming, you know? And then university started, and it was really nice because my university is, like, right next to a mosque, so I would go to the mosque a lot, and I met a lot of new, like, hijab, I met a lot of new Muslim girls and stuff, and I started to feel a lot more whole and complete and a lot more included and less stuck out E, you know, going from, like, being one in 2000 wearing hijab to going like thousands of there was there's so many hijabi girls on my campus you know so it was so helpful eventually like two months into like freshman year university that hijab was down here and locked in girl the outfits were nice and baggy you could not see a single thing and I loved it and honestly that kept going until now literally now we're here now we are here the roughest patch was high school definitely like lost myself lost everything was so bad was so depressed was so not me and then university became a lot easier and I just started working on myself and now we're kind of here there are definitely days where I'm just like snatched I killed it this outfit yeah hijab yeah and then there are other days where I'm just like oh Uh. surrounding myself with other like hijab wearing girls and stuff was definitely easier and definitely helped me become more confident in myself and then also just that summer where I was just so depressed I was like I literally hit rock bottom guys like I hit rock bottom didn't want to be here anymore I was like there's it's only up from here it's literally only up from here and we're up we are up so right now we're just like living life and I'm just like I'm happy with where I'm at with the hijab because like it has been a work in progress we went from great to so bad to great now we're here and inshallah it just goes up from here if anyone gives me evil eye after this and I start struggling again I'm literally killing everyone like I'm just airing out everyone yeah now I'm just really happy and really content and really just happy I'll always get dms from girls that are like i mean uh you inspire me so much to like be myself or to wear my hijab or to whatnot or and it just warms my heart so much because i'm just like that makes me so happy because because everything i just said like that just makes me so happy and i'm so glad that i can be some sort of a comfort or some sort of a person I'm I'm very far from perfect I am not perfect by any means but I'm glad that I can serve as some sort of beacon in some sort of direction for some sort of girls you know (laughs) to any girl who's out here struggling with hijab or thinking about putting hijab first of all do it do it know that there are going to be bad days but there are so many good days like good days on my mind you know good days on good day on my mind you know what I mean and to anyone who's struggling I see you I feel you, and you are going to make it out. You are going to make it out. My biggest piece of advice is to surround yourself with like-minded girls. If you surround yourself with the wrong group of people who make you feel so horrible and so out of place and so horrible and so gross and so nasty and so bad, you are going to be miserable, and that is really going to affect you and going to affect your hijab. If you surround yourself with a nice, positive group of girls who are always uplifting you and kind and fixing your hijab for you in the bathroom and taking pictures and being sweet, you are going to be so up right now. You're going to be so up right now. Everything takes time and always trust Allah's plan and always put your worries on him. Like when I tell you sitting on that prayer mat for like two hours a day changed me because here where I am, (laughs) because I'm up and here I am. Eight years old, 
to I'm 21 years old right now, so 13 years of hijab, 13 years, best years, except for that little middle part, best years, wouldn't change it for the world, it made me the person I am today, and I'm so proud of the person I am today, I'm far from perfect, but we're, we're, gir- we're getting there, girl. I'm here for you. If you want to put your story down, I will sit and I'll read it too and I'll reply and I'll give you advice to the best of my ability. But that was it, guys. Like, we struggled and we're up and there's always a brighter end of the tunnel and life gets better and I love hijab and it's so sweet and it's so warm and I love everything and I love you and I just love everything. And I love hijab and I love it.